Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. God bless you on the conference call. I heard you guys talking. I heard, uh, I think that was Carmelita and uh, also heard Miss Dorothy on there. God bless you. I know others are coming on the conference call right now. And Vicki Bartholomew, God bless you. You are the first one on the call. Hilda Bryant, I'm calling, I'm calling Theo today. Uh, I'm gonna try to go by there as a matter of fact. So pray, 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 amen. Bessie, good, this, good, glad you're on board. Michael Cook, man, you guys are the prayer warriors. I love you guys so much. Rosie, rise and shine. Miss Donna Lee is watching as well. And Ann just came in. My brother Americo, blessings, blessings to you and Yolanda, amen. And, and uh, Nanine, God bless you. It was great talking to you recently. Um, praise God as everyone's coming on board right now. It's just a good day. It's just a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be saved. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and Norman is on board with Marie, right? And Tammy and Lynn Bell. And uh, you guys are awesome. I, I really appreciate your faithfulness. And of course, K and Dre May. <laughs> Can't leave that out. Just too many rhymes that are always on time. Amen. Nicole Joyner. Praise God. So good to have you. Please give your husband my regards. I haven't talked to him in a while. Corey Mitchell. Bless you, my brother. Amen. Donna Lee. Good morning. Listen, we'll just go ahead and get started this morning. All those who are on the conference call, I want to thank you for your faithfulness today. See, the Bible says that, that uh, when we get to heaven, uh, the, the, his words, uh, the, the welcome, welcome, good and successful servant. No, no, no. He said, welcome, good and diligent servant. No, no, no. He said, welcome, good and faithful servant. See, being faithful is the key, amen, for God to unload all his blessings upon our lives. God is looking for faithfulness this morning, amen? Praise God. Well, I wanna open up right now in our scripture. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter two. Proverbs chapter two, verse six. Chapter two, verse six, and Proverbs says this. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth. Oh, I love this. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. When God speaks, listen. Oh, write that down. When God speaks, listen. See, the Lord is always communicating. He uses people. He uses circumstances. And of course, he uses his word. See, and when you read his word daily, you'll hear God speak every day. See, people ask me all the time, listen, is it possible to hear God every day? I said, absolutely. I mean, you can you can hear God whenever you want to. It, the, as a matter of fact, the ball's on your court. He's always willing to speak. If you're willing to be in his word, if you're willing to open up the Bible, because the word of God, the Bible, are God's thoughts, God's words written down for us. So you see, you need to know that the, that the word of God is the inspired word of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit, that word inspire is to breathe. It's the breath of life is in the word of God. So yes, absolutely, you can hear God speak as often as you open his word, amen? See, his wisdom is heard when you're daily in his word. Man, write that down. That even rhymes today, man. His wisdom is heard when you're daily in his word. Joyce Davy, like, God bless you. Good to, glad you could join us this morning as well. So that's kind of the opening scripture, Proverbs chapter two, verse six. Remember that you can listen and you can hear God as often as you want to. Just open up his word, amen, and God will speak to you every single time if you allow him to, if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, praise God. We're going to go ahead and get into our, our actual prayer uh, emphasis today. A few things that we're going to pray for, amen. And the first one is this. This is so important. Discern God's daily plan discern God's daily plan. In Romans 8, 14, it says this, for as many that are led 
by the uh, by the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See this this write this statement down. Prayerful preparation produces prudent planning. Oh my goodness, all those P's, God just inspired me this morning to write that. Prayerful preparation produces prudent planning. See, your agenda, your schedule should be decided in the presence of God. That's why I'm so encouraged and so blessed as so many of us gather early in the morning, way before we start our day for prayer, because that gives us an opportunity to maybe plan our day out. You know, sometimes I try to plan. I try to plan my day the day before, uh, in the evening before. I, I already have an idea of what, what I'm doing, what my teams are doing today, because I've already assigned things to, to start the day off right. But I, but you know, prayerful preparation produces prudent planning, and that's what we need to do is make sure that we prayerfully put our schedules together, that the Holy Spirit is leading us, amen, every single day and making and making sure that our priorities are taken care of. See, your daily plan creates miracles or sometimes can create tragedies depending on whether or not you're being led by the Spirit. See, your inner peace is a signal. See, don't make any decisions. Do not make any decisions unless you are at peace in your heart about it. The peace of God is your signal that what you're doing is right. Amen. Praise God. The second thing we're going to pray for today, uh, besides discerning God's plan, write this down. Don't run from God's calling. Don't run from your calling. Jeremiah 1.5 says this, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. When I read this scripture, this scripture is the key scripture for my worldview, my Christian worldview towards abortion. Because this is saying that way before, way, way, way before I was in my mother's belly, way before I came out of her womb, he had already sanctified me and ordained me to do what I was called to do. So you see, I wanted to let you know that God knew you way before you came on this planet. <laughs> you know, we were born in whatever year, 19, whatever you were born in, whatever year it was that you were born in, or, or 20, whatever, if you're a young person. At the end of the day, God knew that you'd be born at this time, and he had the plan already in place. He knew there's going to be a virus. He knew there's going to be issues. This is not catching God off off, um, uh, you know, he, off guard. I mean, God is never blindsided, amen. He knows what's going on. And in this case, he's talking about the calling. He's calling Jeremiah and letting him know, Jeremiah, listen, I knew you way before you ever landed on this planet. See, listen, if you're writing, take this down. Write this down. When God rings, answer the call. When God rings, answer the call. See, thousands rebel every single day against the call of God into ministry. And it's unfortunate that, that Satan wreaks havoc with their lives because of it. See, think back. See if you can remember any moment God spoke to your heart about becoming a pastor or an evangelist or a missionary or some kind of call. See, consider it again. Are you called? See, find someone, find a man, find a woman of God that can, that maybe can mentor you and maybe help lead you. Because I tell you what, the calling of God is awesome. See, when you're called to ministry, you'll never be happy doing anything else. Write that down. When you're called to ministry, you'll never be happy doing anything else. Amen. Praise God. And the last thing we're going to pray for this morning, uh, amongst many others that we'll pray for, is the third one. This is so important. We're just going to do a little bit of teaching today because I think this is important. I want you blessed. I want you blessed. I want you uh, walking in love, and, but I want you walking in prosperity. I want you walking in God's provision for your life. Uh, you know, because that really is what success is. Success is having everything you need and doing everything you're supposed to do to carry out God's will in your life. Amen. So listen, in Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. This is what the Bible says. And, and, the, and so what is this thir the third thing we're going to pray for today? Write this down if you're taking notes. 
escape the curse. Escape the curse. Now listen carefully what Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 10 says. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, how have we robbed you? And God responds, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That there'll be meat. Now that word meat, actually in, the, in, the, in, this, in this context and in the, um, in the King James Version, actually means food. So the word food was actually meat way before it was an animal, amen, that we ate. So anyway, uh, so, so there will be meat, will be food in my house. And prove me now, prove me, here we go, prove me now, test me now, says the Lord. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be enough room to receive it. Man, this is one of the greatest promises in the word of God. It's something that all of us need to understand, that God wants us to walk in all his blessings. He wants to pour out his blessings upon you. But you got to remember that God's promises are conditional. See, many people walk under this curse. Let me explain a little bit more. The tenth or the tithe means a tenth. So the Bible indicates 10% of your income belongs to God. See, the tithe is a holy seed. It's a seed that's holy, which means it's separated unto the Lord. It belongs to him. It doesn't belong to you. So you need to remember that God, that if you're a child of God, that if you're born again, then we 100%, come on somebody, belong to him. See, when you if you're gonna make him Lord, See, the Bible says that he is Savior and he is Lord. Lord means he owns us, that we belong to him, that he can do that, that the master and that our Lord, just like a landlord owns a home or owns a property. See, when you say Jesus is Lord, you're saying, Jesus, I am all yours, a hundred percent. And he says, bring 10% of the hell, of the wealth that I've given you, the because I've given you health to make wealth, and I've given you a mind, I've given you all these things to produce. So bring a tenth as an offering of saying, of an offering of thanksgiving, uh, in a way of saying, Father, thank you for blessing me. See, millions right now, millions are under this curse. See, each time you receive a paycheck, give ten percent back to God, like a seed, that, like a, like a farmer that sows a seed, Amen, to create a crop. See, when you plant that seed, expect a harvest. <clears throat> Excuse me. He puts a list of promises. Your harvest, in this particular case, says he's going to open the windows of heaven and pour blessings over your life that you will not even be able to contain them. See, millions are under this curse. They've hoarded the tithe of God for themselves. And then they wonder why things just don't seem to work sometimes, why financially they're struggling, struggling, why other parts of their lives are also a mess. I believe that God wants to bless you today. And if you listen, it's not about the money. It's about the heart condition. It's about being obedient to God's word today. Amen. And I know God wants to open up the windows of heaven. Every good father wants to bless their children. Amen. We have to make sure that we uncuff. Come on. Because we have God handcuffed with our disobedience to this part of his word. See, whatever you do, obey God in your giving because it's in your giving that you'll understand what living is all about. See, write this down if you're taking notes. It's time to reverse the curse on my purse. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know what it is. Thursday is just rhyming Thursday. It's time to reverse the curse on my purse. Be generous. 10%. <clears throat> excuse me, it's just the foundation for our giving. Give more. Listen, the more you give, the more, as a matter of fact, let me just say this, you can never outgive God. So, so whatever you do, reverse the curse on your purse. Come on, somebody, by tithing and obeying God's word. Amen. Praise God. Praise. I hope you receive that today. I hope you receive it with all your heart because I know God wants to do great and mighty things. 
but God's favor is always found in obedience to his word, amen. So right now, just lift up your hands. Heavenly Father, we just lift up our hands right now in, in this holy place that we're standing. Father, this morning we are standing on holy ground. We're standing on holy ground, oh God, because your presence is here. And where your presence is, is holy, your presence, where your presence, it's a reverent place, oh God. Even right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for joining us right now. We thank you that this whole time you've been speaking to our hearts. And I pray that your word, Lord God, will, will root itself deeply into our spirit right now, Lord. And Father God, help us to plan, to prepare, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, to, to keep our priorities in place, Lord God, to know, Lord God, that you have a holy agenda, Lord Father, and Lord, you've given us wisdom, and we have things that we need to do, Lord God, but help us to never leave out what you want us to do, Lord God. Help us to create, to create margins around everything we do, Lord God, and to always leave enough space for you to move, Lord God, for, for you to step in and interrupt our schedules at time with things that you want us to do, Lord God, and, and to help us be sensitive and obedient, Lord God, to the needs that are around us, oh God. So in Jesus' name, we surrender our plan every morning and pray that your wisdom, that your understanding, Lord God, will guide us and lead us every single day as we prayerfully prepare, hallelujah, to produce a prudent plan every single day, God. So Father, we thank you right now. And Lord, we just embrace right now our calling. We embrace the ministry that you've given every one of us, oh God. And Lord, it doesn't always have to mean full-time ministry, but there is a purpose way above what we're employed to do. We're employed on this world, but we're deployed in your kingdom. So Father, whatever kingdom work you have for us, help us, oh God, to diligently do that as well. To know, Lord God, that our calling, Lord God, that what you've called us to do is so crucial for the impact of the world around us, oh God. So in Jesus' name, Lord God, I pray for all those right now that they would step into their calling, that they would step into their ministries, Lord God, that they would continue, Lord God, to seek you like never before, to know that your hand of grace and mercy is upon them, Lord God, and that they're calling to do what, <coughs> what you call them to do. That is significant, Lord God. It's, it, it will bring fulfillment into their lives, Lord God. And, and in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, because we can experience personal success, Lord God. But our ultimate significance is reaching out to others and making an impact in other people's lives to serve other people with all the gifts and talents that you've given every one of us, oh God. Let that be, Lord God, a priority as well in our lives. Let us not set aside, Lord God, those things that you find important as well, Lord God. And today, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for those right now, Lord God, that are financially struggling. I pray, Father, that right now you begin to move in their lives. And you said, Lord God, that many are under a curse. They're under a curse because they've hoarded the tithe. And Lord, in Jesus' name, help us, Father God, to trust your word. Help us to plant seeds into your kingdom because the seeds we put in your hands multiply. And you'll multiply that seed back in so many ways, and, and not just financially, but in peace, Lord God, and, and in joy and in love, and, 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 and also by rebuking the devil, Lord God, for our sake. You'll, you'll return that seed in so many ways, oh God. So, so help us and teach us, oh God, how to continue to be diligent, how to be faithful, Lord God in tithing and giving to you, Lord God, so we can reverse this curse, Lord God. Our purse needs to be set free, Lord God. This wallet needs to be released, Lord God, to impact the world, Lord God, because you've given everything you give us, oh God, you've given it for a purpose, Father God. It's not just about raising our standard of living, it's about raising our standard of giving. Hallelujah, Lord God. That we, can, we can't take it with us, oh God. So we thank you, Lord Father, for the opportunity for abundance and overflow to touch other people's lives as well, Father. 
And right now, if you're with me this morning, just put your hands on your prayer list right now. Just put your hands on your prayer list. Michelle Williams, thank you so much for what you do. I see what you do every morning by, by summarizing the three points. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. But right now, if you have your own prayer needs, if you have a request right now that you have before the Lord, I want you to lay hands on that right now. I want you to put hands on that prayer list right now. I want you to begin to lift up the name of Jesus and begin to praise him. But right now, begin to lift these people up that you're interceding for. It may be your friends, your family, uh, whatever it is, whatever circumstances you're bringing before the Lord. Listen, many of us are worrying right now. I, I preached a message. If you had, didn't listen to it, go on today and go into New Life Outreach International's Facebook and I preached a message on worrier or warrior. And I'm telling you what, it's it's so pertinent, it's so relevant for today because we don't need to worry. We just need to be anxious for nothing, like the Bible says, but with all but but in everything, come on, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, we make our request be made known unto God, and then the peace that surpasses all understanding will cover our hearts and our minds. That's his promise. So right now, Father, we believe right now for every need on this prayer list, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for salvation. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance, Lord God. We thank you for your provision, Lord God. We thank you for your peace right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will quiet the storms around us right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak to those storms right now. Peace be still. So Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you didn't speak to the storm. You spoke to the peace that the peace in our hearts, come on somebody, oh, in the name of Jesus, peace be still. And we thank you, Lord God, that when you commanded the peace to be still, the storm subsided. And we thank you for that peace right now that guides us and leads us every single day in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Listen, I hope and pray that today you were blessed Psalms 25 verses 11 through 14 says this, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach his way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity. Listen, when it says fear the Lord, it means to respect and to honor. Amen. See, I, I love that he himself shall dwell in prosperity and his descendants shall inherit the earth. See, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he shall show him and show them his covenant. God is a God of covenant. That is so much more powerful than any transaction, much more powerful than any contract. When God makes a covenant, it is a commitment. It is a. It is a. It, a, it is a, an agreement that cannot be broken. That he cannot break. Amen. So I praise God for all the covenant promises that he has in his word. Amen. Listen. Continue to pray for our nation. Our nation is so in so much havoc right now. Continue. Amen. They need. Yes, ma'am. You have a fabulous day as well. Praise God. But listen, I just want to pray over you right now. I just pray that God will bless you. Amen. And, uh, and Lord, bless your people and keep them. Lord God, shine your face upon them, oh God, and be gracious to them, Lord God. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, go forth today. Go forth and do everything that God has called you to do. Remember that his plan, the plan he has for you, should be your main agenda. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, have a blessed one. And Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow at 7 a.m. right here. Amen. On the Walking in the Spirit program. And just remember this, folks. Every one of you remember this. When you're walking in the spirit, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the spirit today. Stay in God's word. Stay in his presence all day. And today will be the best day of your life. Amen. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.